U.S. airline stock soaring today after the Trump administration announced it will ban Chinese passenger airlines from flying into the United States. Let's get to Phil LeBeau. He's got all the details. Phil. Melissa, the U.S. and China have been negotiating for several weeks about the resumption of flights by U.S. carriers. We're talking about Delta, American, and United from the U.S. back to China. Remember that they stopped back in January. Well, they couldn't come to an agreement, so starting on June 16th, the U.S. has said, you know what, we're not going to let the Chinese continue flying in here. That impacts four Chinese airlines, and they are essentially, the, the Department of Transportation, essentially cutting service, passenger service, between China and the United States. Remember, they've been flying about 34 flights a week, Chinese airlines, from China into the U.S., coming into New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. Not a huge load of flights, but enough that the Department of Transportation has said, you know what, we're not going to do that anymore. So as you take a look at the ADRs of a couple of the Chinese airlines that do trade here in the United States, we're talking about China Southern as well as China Eastern. Keep in mind that these are the two largest airline markets in the world. In 2018, there were more than 8.5 million people who flew between the two countries. As for Delta, United, and American, look, they moved higher along with the rest of the airline stocks today. The U.S. airlines, remember, they suspended their operations to China back on January 31st. That's when President Trump put the restrictions in on Chinese nationals coming into the U.S. due to COVID-19. And again, they've been negotiating, trying to figure out a way to resume these flights, how often they would happen, the schedules, et cetera. And as those talks dragged on, eventually the Department of Transportation said, enough's enough. We're just going to not let you fly here until we can get this worked out. Phil, um, once upon a time, China was seen as a huge growth market for the U.S. airlines. Sure. So if you had to take that out permanently, what, what would that mean to the industry? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. China is, a, especially when you take a look at uh, an airline like United, China has been really the beachhead for their Asia-Pacific routes. And from there, they've been able to further expand their offerings uh, throughout Asia. And so if you took it away permanently, and nobody expects it to go away permanently, it would have a huge Im uh, implications for United, Delta, and American. But again, the, the hope is and the belief is within the airline industry Eventually, they will figure out a way to get these schedules going again. And especially if you have COVID-19 easing at some point in the future, mm -hmm. you want that traffic to resume again. Sure. And the belief is that that eventually will. All right, Phil, thank you. Phil LeBeau. I mean, that's the key, right? Will, when will people feel comfortable uh, with flying Delta today, saying that it would continue to not uh, take middle seat reservations until the end of September? Uh, Karen, how, how are you feeling about the airline's now that it seems like the airlines may be through the worst. I think, I mean, maybe through the worst. I don't know if, um, I, I don't own any is the short answer, but you know, I'm concerned about the airlines. I hope they all do well and survive. If I had to pick one, I'd probably go with Southwestern to um, Southwest because I think that I want to be just in the U.S. And in terms of the balance sheets, I think, they're in the best shape. I, I saw Delta de debt was downgraded a little bit today. Um, I, I, I wish him well, but I can't, I can't get on board. They're just losing too much money. Yeah. Tim? I think for airlines, the, the question of recovery is timing, not if. Uh, and so, yes, I understand where capacity cuts have gone. Delta also announced today that, that first class capacity will be down 50. They'll, they'll basically cut seats 50 percent. Uh, main cabin, they'll cut them 60 percent. I think that's about giving people more confidence to get back on those planes. Um, and I also think that the more that people have had this 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 visceral reaction to some of those uh, those visuals we showed on our show and other people know about where a sneeze goes around an airplane um, that actually I think ultimately allows it to kind of organically shake out and I think that's part of what uh, we're seeing it's exactly how we've seen the, res the return to airline stocks as investments it's almost as people have assessed uh, the risks in flying themselves so um, I think capacity cuts are not permanent and and I think airlines you know we talked about that jets ETF if you want to play the sector that's one way to do it. But but Delta Airlines has the best balance sheet of the major carriers. Karen talked about Southwest for the U.S. Fun fact about the Jets ETF, 64th consecutive day of inflows into that ETF, according to Bloomberg. Um, so this is really catching a lot Amazing. of uh, attention, probably by retail investors. Guy Adami, you know, Boeing has been working really hard in terms of trying to figure out um, filtration systems, ways to circulate the air in a cabin that would make it safer for people. Uh, Boeing, by the way, had a huge pop in today's session. 
Huge move today, and I, and I hope they figure it out. With that said, I mean, when you're sitting on top of somebody on some of these planes, as you know, I mean, it's a little cramped. They can put every filtration system known to mankind, and it's still going to be somewhat problematic. But with that said, I mean, look at Boeing. Went all the way down to 90 bucks, rallied to 180 We discussed that. I thought it would trade back to 100 It got to 114 and here we are at 180 So if you're looking for a place to sort of pull the ripcord in terms of taking profits, have you been in this? And I'm sure Dave Portnoy is watching. 180 makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Apparently, um, this is his Delta favorite Tim show. Delta Tim mentioned, you know, we did talk about the. It is his favorite show now, right? Yeah. Did we establish that? I think so. That's fantastic. Well, let's say hi to Dave right now. How by could the it way. not be? And I heard, it by the way, it should be. Dick Fosbury reached out. He's a huge Fast Money fan now. I totally digress. <laughs> Delta, I think, you know, sell upside calls. Yeah, $31 is the level I think you can trade up to.